Jaws Unleashed is one of those games I only ever thought I played, but instead somehow it seemed to be loved by many. When the game Maneater was announced, all I could see while watching interviews was people praising Jaws Unleashed. So many people were comparing these two and debating which one was the better game. It really felt so weird to see such a niche game from my childhood being brought back up to the spotlight. Especially since this game was also a movie tie-in. Now, it's no surprise to anyone just how impactful Jaws was as a movie, with how many horror movies that are getting released now that even reference Jaws when they're not even about sharks sometimes. It just shows how impactful Jaws really was in the movie industry. It's also why to this day we still get horrible shark movies that try to capture what Jaws did, like Sharkula, Avalanche Shark, and even Cocaine Shark. So it's safe to say Jaws really was the shit. Now even though Jaws Unleashed is usually the one everybody talks about, Jaws games have existed for a while, all the way back to 1983. Wonderful high-tech graphics, you can just see every part of the shark, it's crazy. Now this is why kids nowadays just don't appreciate real gameplay. They gotta have their fucking shoot shoots while while us men, while us gamers, were just, I wasn't even born in 1983. What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> Most games, however, had you playing as a person fighting the ferocious beast, usually trying to stop Jaws from killing everything in sight. Now, most people usually see Jaws Unleashed as the first Jaws 3D appearance he's ever had, but it was actually the game Universal Studios theme park adventure where Jaws had his first appearance in 3D. And look, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't know about this because this game's intro makes you pick up trash for 30 minutes before you can even play these attractions, so wouldn't be surprised if you did somehow have this game and you never even saw Jaws in it. But even with this being Jaws' first 3D appearance, we still weren't even playing as the Killer Shark. That wouldn't happen till the PS2 and Xbox. Jaws Unleashed hit the scenes, and from this intro you can tell Jaws is here to make a name for itself. Also, when I was younger, uh, my brother would make me skip this intro every time I played Jaws if he watched me because he was actually scared of this intro. Yeah, he didn't like it at all. Jaws Unleashed was the first time you could control Jaws in a 3D space, and let me tell you, the devs really took advantage of that. While the film takes a more distance approach with Jaws, where the fear is just the next attack from him and not him actually causing mayhem, where you see him doing it constantly and he only really shows up when he needs to, the game lets you decide when the next attack happens. You want to go ruin a bunch of beachgoers days? You sure can. You want to ruin boats and cause massive property damage? I don't see why not. Jaws was here to show whatever he wants, he will get. Now just in case if someone like asked me what I feel about Maneater versus Jaws and like which one do I think is better, I personally think Maneater feels nicer to control and has a lot more going on, but the shark in that game feels pretty weightless, making bites not have a real impact. While Jaws feels heavy and hard to turn sharply, but his bites have power and feel like I'm really tearing into whatever I just attacked. But anyone who says Jaws is better is blinded by nostalgia, trust me, it is not better in any way. The only pros that Jaws has over Maneater is the fact that it does feel way nicer to control Jaws, but actually playing the story of Jaws vs. Maneater, it's night and day on which one is better, trust me. And I'll explain why in this video. But even with that, I don't think Jaws is a bad experience to try out. I just think actually doing what the game wants you to do is not the fun part. But going around and just being a dick as a shark, oh yeah, way better than Maneater, 100%. Now, Jaws Unleashed wasn't the last 3D outing we got to play as Jaws, as there was a Wii and 3DS title for Jaws, and these games were not well received. Which is why Jaws Unleashed is seen as the best game in the 3D series, since it is. But why not dust off that old PS2 and dive into the water and explore what lurks in Jaws' territory? Jaws Unleashed has one thing nailed in its presentation. The title screen has the music everyone is well aware of, as you can see Jaws swimming on the surface. Picking the menu brings you underwater seeing remains from what was once a living person. In the game, you have these wide open areas to explore with tons of sea creatures to find and eat. I know Jaws is supposed to be scary and all, but in the game, I really find Jaws so adorable with his model. I think it's honestly the fact they gave him really cute eyes for some reason. Like, I don't know, I find them really cute, it's weird. The tutorial level shows how Jaws controls and teaches you how to explode boats and cause mayhem. After beating it, you get shown this giant map to explore, and this is when you're tasked to go to different parts of the map to do story missions. These can either consist of a boss fight, exploring an area and getting to the end, or just have Jaws be the biggest dick possible. 
Now, in my opinion, I think the earlier missions for Jaws feel way more fleshed out and have quite a good amount of care to it. Sadly, the later missions become tedious or feel like they're just unplayable at times. A lot of the later missions have Jaws swimming through tight corridors or attacking giant structures with bombs. The later missions also have very wide open areas, making traversing in them a chore when you fail a lot because when you die, you usually have to do the whole mission over again. I think the worst mission I can think of is the one where you have to avoid mines in this slow, cumbersome mission and then find three divers. It's just not a fun mission to try to throw barrels to clear a path when there's no real way to know where the barrel you're throwing will even go because you don't have a way to really aim besides just kind of guess. Also, I don't know why a lot of these missions just end up making Jaws sneak around or just basically become like Metal Gear Solid Shark Edition. Like, I'm playing as a giant shark that can kill people and destroy boats. So how come a lot of the missions, I kind of just don't do that? I'm mostly just sneaking around and throwing bombs and then running away. It's personally why I just don't like the later stages in all honesty, because this is what they mostly come down to. I think a good example for why the bomb missions kind of suck is this one right here where you have to fight a giant boat with the bombs, and you're tasked to grab these bombs that it's dropping to throw at the boat while it's also dropping things to electrocute you, and sometimes the bombs you throw won't even register the right amount of damage for whatever reason. And whenever you have to attack something out of the water, it's annoying because anything below can hurt you while you're no longer able to see what's down below you. I've taken so much damage not realizing I was swimming near things damaging me since I had to be above water to see what I was supposed to be damaging. So hopefully you get why I'm annoyed with these types of missions. The last mission that I can think of that really annoyed me is this area with these really cramped pipes. If you end up getting sucked with the water flow, the flow of water will always bring you to your death. Which this ends up being really annoying when I was just trying to figure out where I was to just be taken off course and either die or barely cheese my way out of it and then have to find my way back in again. Compare all these missions to the mission of when Jaws raids SeaWorld and kills Shamu, with every bite showing more gore forming on him, and actually the only real mission I liked is the SeaWorld one. It's the only mission that feels like the devs had something to work with, as it has segments you go through that connect well together. Full cutscenes added for that extra movie feel, plus a full-on boss fight. The rest of the missions just end up being Jaws throwing explosives at that stuff to get rid of it, and like I mentioned before, there's just too many random factors that would decide if your throw works properly, or if your explosions even want to work. For a game that wants you to be this killer man-eating shark, you spend more time throwing shit than eating. Like, I don't want to be here destroying a generator while my swimming is messed up because of the turbine here. I want to be out destroying property by dashing into it and hitting it with my tail while murdering people with my shark bites. So why does the game just insist on making Jaws destroy stuff like this? And you make all these moves for Jaws to use plus the extra stuff that he can learn, and the only real move you ever really need is the bite to hold the item and then throw it. A good amount of the time if I ever was eating something or attacking something, it ended up being because my health was low and I needed to recover some back. The missions will rarely force you to eat a person or a living thing since it would rather have Jaws take down oil rigs, which then makes me feel like Jaws is supposed to be the hero here. Most of the things Jaws destroys would be things polluting the ocean, which then means Jaws is helping the ocean, but he also just murders a poor locked up orca whale, so I don't know what I should believe. Because if this is the case and Jaws is destroying things ruining the ocean, then that means Jaws is smart enough to understand the ocean is being ruined and who's doing it. Granted, he knows to bite a lab person to use him as a living key card, so maybe Jaws is the Albert Einstein of sharks. But enough being negative, what does Jaws Unleashed do right? And to my surprise, a good amount of stuff I didn't even expect it to do. So the one thing I feel Jaws gets right, and thankfully it's the most important thing to get right, is the feeling of being a big, beefy, great white. You feel like an unstoppable force of nature just chomping and throwing whatever stands in your way, at least if you're not fighting armor subs. Jaws bites feel so heavy and give the player a nice sense of impact. Being able to move the joysticks to rip and tear into your enemies with a nice level of PS2 gore, seeing people losing their limbs or sea creatures torn in half, just shows how much detail went into this part of the game. I also love throwing people into walls and they just explode in a huge blood cloud. And the amount of sea creatures in the game is quite astounding, even if from what I can tell, a good amount you can't reach as they're outside the boundaries. But it's still impressive how much there actually is here. Now this is a detail that I think only I would get a kick out of, but they program wild sharks to attack injured fish or people. If you were to bite a person's leg off and have them bleed next to other sharks, the sharks would come and then start to eat them. They didn't have to do this, but man, 
Talk about the smallest thing to pay attention to. I do like that Jaws can learn new moves from upgrades, even if the upgrade themselves feel pointless as it's the usual bite harder, swim faster crap. I feel these should have been locked towards progression through the stages and have the upgrades be used for the new moves, but props to them for actually giving more of a reward with the new moves, even if they're very situational and you will have no way to check what moves you have after seeing this screen once, explaining how to use it. I think swimming through the ocean is quite fun even if it stays very shallow throughout a lot of it besides a few missions. You can find treasures or collectibles to get more points towards upgrades, but the unlocks are kinda worthless. The movie scenes are cool at least for what they are, but getting all the license plates just grants you with the level select for whatever reason. Here's a tip, if you name your file name Shark, you will unlock level select right from the start and for anyone wanting to start a playthrough of this after seeing this video, enter this as your name on the name entry screen, Blood, and you will get 1 million points for upgrades. If you get all the treasure chests, you get God Mode. I guess it's good if the game ends up being too hard, but I don't see the point of it. I really love the bosses, or should I say two of the bosses in the game? The boss with the orca ends up being a classic fight as you both feel evenly matched and are playing a game of cat and mouse. You and the orca try to circle around each other to see who can bite who. The ending scene when you kill the orca gives me a mixed feeling of wow and damn bro, he didn't do anything to deserve that, come on man. The next is the giant squid and this feels like a nice way to show you've really mastered any threat in your way and getting to tear off each tentacle till you can go to the massive eye is such a wonderful treat. And the reason why I don't like the rest of the bosses is because they're just boats. They're either a bigger boat or a boat with more guns, that's it. Well, I think it's time to cover the small story of Jaws Unleashed. This game takes place 30 years after the first film happened, meaning this is a canon story of Jaws. It all starts as the CEO of Stephen Shaw has his son eaten by the Great White Shark. He then ends up hiring a guy named Cruz Raddick, a shark hunter to find the Great White and take him out. This is when you do the tutorial level and wreak havoc on the beachgoers, and then you soon get captured by Brody, a guy who's been trying to capture you as well for research purposes. You then get transported to this game's version of SeaWorld, and when they finally have you in a holding tank, they can't decide if they should outright kill you or use you as a tourist attraction. They leave, and I'm sure nothing can go wrong. We murder the orca, and then we cut back to Brody telling the mayor the subsonic frequencies being emitted from their submarines are making the sharks aggressive and as a result are attacking anything that swims near them. He gets ignored. And then it's nighttime and we attack some more beachgoers till a truck comes and starts tossing barrels in the water. We grab one and throw it at an oil line pipe. This made the whole refinery sink into the ocean causing massive amounts of damage. Then for a few other missions we just go around destroying more stuff, nothing really story wise happens, it's literally just mission after mission. But now I want to talk about the giant squid from earlier. So as a child, I always remember this being the final boss. I remember beating this and the game was over so vividly. Turns out, no, that's not even the final boss. There's two bosses after it. One is against the mayor in a yacht, and this other is against Cruz. I think the reason why I remember the squid being the final boss is probably because of how tedious and annoying this fight is after it. So I had to look it up on YouTube to even figure out what to do, and when I did do it, it's just stupid. It's the fight against the mare. You have to push his boat enough to hit these things to damage it. And once you do that, they die and then a bunch of fireworks just go off. The fight with crews and the coast guards come down to just fighting a boat while you have a bomb attached to you that will go off. I think the ending here isn't that bad as everything is out to kill you here, even if the amount of things trying to kill you is a little too much. You take Cruz's boat out and then it just cuts to this scene and then the coast guard drops a bomb at the wreckage hoping to kill Jaws. Once they do it, they think Jaws is dead, but turns out, he's still alive. Oh no! Now, I'm pretty sure Jaws had a very rushed development, and if you need more proof to this, here's how the credits, you know, go. Well, I think the game starts off strong. I think, though, it just falls so flat as soon as, soon as you get to the end. Like, the whole aquarium level and everything, I think that does really well. But this, it just falls flat as soon as you get to this point. This is the wow. This is my fucking credits. I just get put back in the game and they fucking show me credits. That is horrible. The dude. They didn't even fucking try with this part. Yeah, these are some of the worst credits I've ever seen in any game. 
Now I do want to cover this as I want people to understand just how much this movie really impacted the view on sharks as a whole. Sharks before were seen as scary still before the movie came out, but not to the extent they became after. The movie made the public just think sharks were man-eaters and hunted humans on the daily. The hysteria got so bad after the release of the movie, people just started to kill sharks even more than before and even held great white catching tournaments. And all of this made it so bad that it almost completely wiped out the whole population on the west coast of North America for the sharks themselves. Even the writer Peter talked about how he regretted writing the book after learning more about sharks and the impact that it all had. Even Spielberg chimed in how his fear is that sharks are mad at him for the damage the movie did on their image. Now I'm not saying Jaws is fully to blame on the decline of the population of sharks, as there are still other factors, commercial fishing for the fins and whatnot didn't help a lot, that really definitely didn't help. And this was basically them just catching sharks, cutting their fins off and releasing them back into the water to either drown or die from something else eating them. And while doing research on the shark fishing stuff I was going to show in the video, I found this channel. Um, it's basically a 19 minute video about how sharks are not endangered and that basically um, the N NMFS, whatever the fuck that is, I don't honestly know what that is, is trying to take fishermen jobs away. It's really badly like shown, like all the stuff that they're showing is just horrible. But I wanted to talk about it because it's fucking hilarious. I'll have it linked down in the description if you want to see it. It's really bad. But Jaws really made people fear sharks and when people react out of fear, it's usually never a good reaction. Now if you're scared of sharks and find them creepy, by all means go for it. Some sharks are actually very weird and creepy looking, but the whole idea that sharks are man-eating monsters really needs to stop. Sharks have a lot of interesting things about them and behaviors we're still not aware of fully. But hopefully from seeing this video, you not only gained a new appreciation for watching me play and talk about Jaws, but a new understanding about sharks. But with that, my final thoughts on Jaws, a game I loved as a child but sure has not aged well. I know I still see people praising this game and how the last time they played it was probably when they were a kid, but at the end of the day, I think it's nice that the game can still be held in high regards to players all around the world. Just don't actually play this game again if you still want to keep those emotions, because I sure as hell lost those. But thank you guys for watching, hopefully you've been enjoying 61 Days of Spook, and this was today's episode on Jaws. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good night guys.